My name is Vania. I'm an EEG technologist. Typical work day for me is Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. Um, I perform EEGs on inpatients and outpatients. An outpatient is a patient who generally scheduled and comes in from the outside to get their test done. An inpatient is someone who's already within the hospital setting that is, needs a test ordered by their physician. Um, what we do is we go to the patient's room or when the patient is scheduled bring them back to our lab. We get information from them regarding their medical history that whether it be as to why they're having the EEG done, um, their past as far as what has went on as to why the EEG needs to be performed, medical, other f past history regarding their family. Um, we explain to the patient that Basically what we do, we're running a test to measure their brain wave function. Um, generally, it's we are not the, per, uh, the person to give a diagnosis. We are there just to run the test and to look for any potential abnormalities within the test that may need to uh, be told to the doctor in an immediate fashion or uh, just to mark the test, I guess I should say, so that the doctor is aware if there is anything that stands out. Um, typically what we do, we uh, bring the, the, when the, we set the patient down, we measure their head. Um, the purpose of measuring their head is to have um, anatomical markings so that when we place our electrodes on the patient's head for the test, we know there, each electrode has an appropriate area that it needs to be. The left side is the odd numbers, the right side is the even numbers. And each electrode has a, a special place, meaning the frontal, section, central, parietal, occipital areas to pick up each, uh, any electrical activity from each particular area and lobe of the brain. And the patient, after the marking, we use like a skin prep in which we prep the patient's head to cleanse it. And we apply the electrode with a conductive paste that is going to give us our reading. After we've done all that, we secure the electrodes with like a, a Curlex or a gauze wrap that keeps the electrodes in place. We have the patient lie back onto the bed. And generally at that point, uh, if it's on an outpatient basis, we go back into our, um, our lab room and we speak to the patient from the other room in which we have an intercom system placed in the room that the patient can hear us and we generally want them to open and close their eyes and we're checking for reactivity. Um, each wave pattern is what some people would like to say mimics kind of an EKG but it's more so a brain wave test so it's going to have brain waves but it's going to be multiple waves on the screen. So therefore each wave pattern has a special significance in the area that we're looking so when we ask them to close their eyes we're checking for reactivity and various other things. Um, so an actual test itself can run anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. The patient is also expected to sleep after a period of time. We also have activation procedures where we like the patient to hyperventilate and have uh, use a photic lamp and that's to bring any, hopefully bring out any underlying potential for abnormality if there is some. Um, the stress level varies. Um, it depends on the patient load and the day. And I think you have more of a stress level uh, potentially on the ages. We do EEGs on children of um, children, we do them on adults, elderly, so it just, it's, it, it's kind of up in the air. I think more of the stress comes when the expectation of when you go to a floor and the unknown of not knowing what type of patient that you may have. An EEG technologist, I attended a two-year college in which I got my degree, associates in applied science degree of electro neurodiagnostic technology. Um, that particular college was a KHEP accredited college, meaning that it not only offered EEG, but it also trained us in other modalities such as polysomnography, um, evoked potentials, and it gives us the opportunity to have other avenues of it that might be of interest for us. Also, um, in obtaining that degree, it made me more marketable in the workforce.
another benefit to having the uh, degree in, in electoral neural diagnostic technology is that it better prepared me to where I can obtain my registry to be a registered EEG technologist. Um, we are registered through, uh, through the abret.org, that is where we get our registry from. What we have to expect in trying to obtain that is it's a written examination and then upon having a written examination we have to take our oral boards in which we sit and have to be questioned from other registered technologists in the field that will determine if we are adequate EEG technologists. I do believe that this is a great benefit to us because it's not only our word or your individual word of saying that you're knowledgeable of what you do, but it also shows that through the determination of others that you are capable and you're, you're just well versed in knowing your EEG. Uh, as far as school, when I was in school, the what we primarily took were like anatomy and physiology, different sciences. There wasn't much math, although it was helpful. Um, I think what was different about it is that the electronics part of it, because you are like you you're receiving electricity from the brain that's coming out, so you have your positives and your negatives and all that. If you're not really into electronics it can kind of throw you for a loop but you kind of grasp it and, and, and it all like gels together and makes sense. The best part of the job is being able to know that not only when, once you are registered that you are able pretty much there's a lot of job openings um, and that you don't have to retake your registry for whatever, wherever you want to live. Like say you lived in one state and you moved to another state, you don't have to get re-registered. Once you're registered, you're registered. Um, so generally there's, there's vast job opportunities and there's always room for growth. Another thing, the benefit is that you can also, it, you show it if you are well versed you can have you can move to another area of neurophysiology and maybe go into sleep or evoke potentials if you are trained in that area but you still already have the backbone of an EEG technologist which it's it all kind of melts together in a sense um, another good thing about this job is the helping of others um, seeing patients because that we primarily treat for epilepsy um, come in and their whole life is disturbed with the fact that they may not be able to drive again or not even knowing what's going on with them and then they are diagnosed with epilepsy and they can be treated and it can help their way of life or the people that have been treated for so long and have been seizure free and then running several tests that come back normal and then they can be taken off of their medication. Um, I could say the worst part of the job for me would be, and, and not all facilities are the same, but in a hospital setting you're expected to take call, meaning that can be one night a week and a week in a month, anywhere from depending on when the, uh, the lab closes, and in our case at 5 o'clock until 7 a.m. the next morning, uh, you would, could be called in in an emergent situation um, and expected to perform a test. So that being the unknown. Um, another area that can be kind of sensitive is coming across patients in which we primarily perform our tests for, in the, for the idea that we're trying to rule out seizure, but also we are there to measure brainwave function. So it can be any type of head trauma, um, any type of non-accidental trauma, and I think the worst part of the job is coming in and dealing with those type of people who, whose brain wave function is almost non-existent and being there to run that test in order to try and give the doctors an idea of where to go from there and a sense of determining um, their value of life. But I, I believe that this field for me has been very great. It's been very beneficial. I have learned so much. I can 
grow, I can move around, there's so much I can do. Um, training and helping others and just the knowledge of continuing to learn and is forever changing. Final advice would be basically for this line of work is that you're going to have to be prepared for whatever that could go on. Um, to study hard and even though it may seem like some things don't make sense in the beginning, it will make sense later. Meaning like as far as like the purpose of measuring and why we are so precise and why things need to be the way that they should be is so that you can have, provide an adequate test for that doctor and for the patient itself. Uh, you have to have a love of what you do. You have to enjoy what you do. Um, and I think it, it's, it has to be totally a, a good interest. You have to want to enjoy your job. And if you, if anybody's really interested it's it's worth looking into there's many websites and different things you can go to to find out more about EEG um, also you would have to be prepared to possibly move because it is such a specialized field so being realizing that this is not something that you can just go to any hospital and find if the more in the smaller hospitals you have smaller labs but the bigger metropolitan areas is where the, the offer is the best as far as being able to expand your knowledge in EEG. So it, I think the best thing you can do is just research it to your ability and if it suits you then all will be well. Another beneficial website to go to would be asset.org or abret.org to find any further information regarding becoming an EEG technologist.